Welcome back to unit number 4. Unit number 4 deals with the Indian power sector. We will start with evolution of the Indian power sector and next we will see about the important acts which are related to electricity sector which happened in our country post independence and later we will see different regulatory bodies in which handle the Indian electricity sector. Starting today we will discuss about the evolution of Indian power sector. Electricity somewhere started in around 1910 and from that time till date 2022 we have seen a wide expansion of electricity sector in our country. So I hope that by the end of this lecture we will be able to identify the structural changes and list them accordingly. So, I will start with a few milestones of electricity sector in our country. Shown on the screen is the first Heidel power plant which has been developed at Darjeeling in the year 1897 by the Britishers. You can see the outside of the, this is the outside of the power plant whereas here you can see the generator. This was the first power plant which was established in our country followed by this is another milestone which happened in our country regarding the electricity. Earlier we used to have steam engines which were started by the Britishers and shown on the screen is a picture which has been taken from a newspaper. The first electric train started with best current Mumbai. It started in 1905. And next, this was the street lighting which occurred in, uh, which was established in Bangalore in the same year of 1905. Still, there is a discussion that uh, where actually commercial uh, lightning happened. There is a discussion. I took him to know that there are two cities. One is a Bangalore and the other one is a Kolkata where street lighting was established. Now, we will see a few milestones of electricity sector in our country. The first Act was uh, 1910, Electricity Act 1910, which was developed by the Britishers. It created a framework for electricity sector in our country. In Electricity Act 1910 itself, they had some rules regarding production of electricity, how to issue the licenses to different people who are ready to generate electricity. And it had also some provisions of issuing licenses and also the rules particularly regarding how transmission lines are to be laid and how power is to be provided to the people. And next, in 1948, after independence, this Electricity Act 1910 was replaced by Electricity Supply Act 1948. In 1948, with the implementation of this ES Act, the complete transfer of power regarding the generation, distribution and the utilization came to the states. Earlier, Till 1947 also, to my knowledge is concerned, till 1947 also, electricity was limited to only major cities. Even in Kolkata, Mumbai, Chennai, all these presidencies, earlier there were presidencies, 80% of the generation and the transmission of electricity was with the private bodies and with the local bodies only. So, this was changed in 1948 acts. SIPs were developed, what we call them as state electricity boards. In 1948, SCBs were developed. Once again, I repeat, 
till 1948, 80% was there with the local bodies and private bodies. And after the formation of this SIPs, that we will discuss again when we see the evolution of electricity sector. Complete power of generation, transmission, distribution, utilization of electric power was vested with the state governments. And even though electricity was decided as a concurrent subject, once again I repeat, electricity is considered as a concurrent subject. Electricity is a concurrent subject, which means the state and central do have the power. Central and state do have the power. But the development of electricity regarding the generation, transmission, distribution and utilization was vested with the state electricity boards. They were given permission to increase the generation. They were given permission to increase the generation by setting up new plants. Provide electricity to everyone. So, there were limited targets or what we call them as a big targets at that time in 1948 and those targets were vested with the state electricity boards itself. And next was uh, 1964. So, in 1964 what happened is regional electricity boards were established because at that time uh, we had this uh, interconnection. Interconnection between the states was a little bit difficult. You know that India has so many number of states, few states, few states have huge resources, whereas there are smaller states which don't have many resources. So generation was a little bit tough for them. So to overcome that generations, regional electricity boards were formed in 1964. Next is 1975. This was also established keeping in view that there are fewer states, that there are smaller states which had reason behind it. There were so many reasons, but the principal reason was smaller states didn't have the resources. So there needed a big a nationwide generation capacity because the states were lagging in generation and there was no proper mutual cooperation. So that's why centrally funded generating companies came into picture. NTPC, NHPC, they were started in 1975 with a single aim of generating on behalf of the central government and providing power to many number of states, not to single state, many number of states. And next came into picture 1991 where we started liberalizing the things. So, private investment was encouraged and foreign, foreign investment was also encouraged in the electricity sector, 1991. So, if you carefully see, before 1948, it was pre-independence. In 1948 to 1991, this region, we call it as nationalization region, nationalization era where state electricity boards were set up and we will discuss the detail what happened in 1948 to 1991 the time from uh, Jawaharlal Nehruji to the start of uh, PV Narasimha Rao so we will discuss that one 1948 to 1991 and next 1991 was complete new era where private participation and foreign investment was completely allowed in our country and next in 1992 we received first gazette notifications because we entertained why also i'll say because in 1991 private participation was fully encouraged foreign investment came into picture so you know that when foreign people come into picture into the electricity sector what they need they need very standard tools and why also that i'll explain in detail uh, why we have gone. there were so many reasons why we have entertained private participation so much private participation uh, that we will see in the evolution uh, slide. Uh, in 1998, ERCs came into picture. See, to finalize the tariffs, ERCs have come into picture. 
these were set up in 1998 and next CTUs and STUs were also established to overcome the transmission issues and next was distribution sector was privatized for the first time in 1999 and then moved on to 2002 in Delhi also we tried this privatization but it is sorry I am sorry to say that this privatization of distribution utilities has also failed to some extent and uh, see these are few milestones after 2000 which we might have seen 2002 ABT has been introduced availability, availability basic tariff electricity act 2003 which we are now enjoying now the Fruits of Electricity Act 2003 and next came Open Access Regulations, Tariff Policy, Power Exchange Guidelines. These are all more amendments to Electricity Act 2003 and next we had this for generation we started this captive mining and uh, interstate transmission also they started to privatize that one. So all these things were happening because of 2003 and one of the biggest milestones is 2019-20 I think. We achieved nearly 100% electrification. At least I don't know whether we have achieved or not, but it was announced that we achieved this 100% electrification of all the houses in our country. And in 2022 to 23, which I don't know when it comes into picture, we will be having a new Act, Electricity Act 2023 or 2022 still we do have 20 more days for this one so it might be electricity at 2023 will be coming into picture next now coming back to this big slide of evolution of indian power sector where i'll be asking in detail about the different stages of our indian power sector first of all i will divide this entire era from up to 2020 right now we are in right so i'll take 1947-48 this was pre-independence from 1947 to 1948 also we were still relying upon 1956 also this was before introductory stage and in 1956 to 1991 up to 1991 when we have started this SEVs and how they performed what was happening there and 1991 to 19 late 1990s till 2003 where liberalization we had so much privatization that we will discuss in detail now and next we will see from 2023 to 2022 what happened actually okay that we will see now okay uh, i will continue in the next ppt of what happened in detail okay thank you as of now